Thank you for joining us today on Netfall. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. West Africa is facing its worst food crisis on record, driven by militants that have forced millions of people off their land in Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Nigeria. Floods and droughts linked to climate change have destroyed crops and lives across the continent. And now, the conflict in Ukraine is making a dire situation even worse. United Nations agencies are warning that price hikes sparked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine will worsen a food crisis in Africa where tens of millions of people had already been plunged into extreme poverty. We look at how this is playing out across the continent. Just stay with us. For Abubakar Noma, it is another day to toil. The 54 year old farmer in Kuje, in Abuja, is preparing the land and planting his crops these days, not knowing if there will be a bountiful harvest later. As the years go by, he says the yields are becoming poorer. The problem is from insecurity. Because you cannot move from here almost five kilometers to your farm. If you are moved from here, if you leave town five kilometers from the town, you are in trouble. Maybe if you come back or you know if you come back. That is the problem. Second thing is a uh, lack of fertilizer. There is no fertilizer. Because nearby the town, the, the land is not fertile again, unless you use fertilizer. And the federal government doesn't even care about us. So that is the problem. The Nigerian smallholder farmers face many challenges, but getting their soils to be fertile again almost always tops the list. They depend on fertilizer to achieve this. Unfortunately, many of them lack access to it. The World Bank blamed low fertilizer usage for the low yield in sub-Saharan Africa. It is reported that the figure for Nigeria is particularly low. Fertilizer use was around 6 kilograms per hectare in 2016, compared with a global average of 140 kilograms. Despite the Abuja Declaration of 2006, which sought to increase fertilizer use to an average of 50 kilograms per hectare in African countries. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February has added to volatility in financial markets, sending commodity prices higher and affecting logistics, potentially derailing the economic recovery from COVID-19 in many countries, including Nigeria. It's an, an almost grotesque situation that we see at the moment in, in Ukraine. There are nearly 25 million tons of grain that could be exported, but they cannot leave the country simply because of the lack of infrastructure and the, uh, and the blockade of the ports. At the same time, in, in the month of July, August, there will be a new crop coming in. And despite the war, the, 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 the harvest conditions don't look that uh, dire, and that could really mean that there's not enough storage capacity going forward in the Ukraine, particularly if there is no wheat corridor opening up for, for exports from the Ukraine. The United Nations Secretary General during his visit to Nigeria said that the problem of global food security could not be solved without restoring Ukrainian agricultural production and Russian food and fertilizer outputs to the world market. Without bringing back the agricultural production of Ukraine and the food and fertilizer production of Russia and Belarus into world markets despite the war. And I'm determined to do everything to facilitate the dialogue that can help achieve this objective. In March 2022, President Muhammad Buhari inaugurated a $2.5 billion fertilizer plant with which the country hopes to contribute to the global supply amid the impact of increasing prices and the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war. For the global fertilizer market, the government said the inauguration of the plant is timely, as it will help Nigeria to solve a perennial fertilizer problem. Fertilizer from the plant located in an industrial zone in Lagos will be exported to many countries, including the United States, Brazil, India, and Mexico. It is reported that Nigeria had to buy emergency supplies of Canadian potash in April 
after the country was unable to import the key fertilizer from Russia due to the impact of Western sanctions. Russia's Urakali, a major global producer of the crop nutrient, has been Nigeria's exclusive supplier since 2019. Last month, the International Monetary Fund said the Russian invasion of Ukraine had delivered a further huge negative shock to sub-Saharan Africa, driving food and energy prices higher and putting the most vulnerable people at risk of hunger. The extra pressure comes as many countries are still reeling from the protracted COVID-19 pandemic. Coming at a time when the entire global attention is focused on the unfortunate situation in Ukraine, we in this region are feeling already that the world is forgetting about us. There can be no better assurance that the world is with us as we confront extremist terrorist organizations, hunger, and the enormous problems of dealing with millions of displaced people than this important visit. Across Africa, food insecurity is increasing. The Horn of Africa is facing its driest conditions in more than 40 years. A civil war in Ethiopia has pushed hundreds of thousands into farming conditions, and millions more are at risk in South Sudan. Even before the war in Ukraine broke out in February, food inflation was pushing many African families to the brink. Global food commodity prices climbed over 23 percent last year, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, at the fastest pace in more than a decade. But the war has pushed many more into poverty. I think the same situation in the entire Horn of Africa. I think, uh, um, for the moment, in the region I'm following through, um, you have Ethiopia, you have Somalia, you have northern part of Kenya, and we are talking about around 20 million people um, whose life are now threatened by food insecurity, probably high level of uh, malnutrition, severe um, lack of water, um, loss of all the livelihood, loss of livestock, um, population movement across border, it become one of the most important humanitarian crises. We are also living through the far-reaching repercussion of the Ukraine conflict, which we know is already impacting on the wheat price. And we know that countries that I have mentioned, Somalia, Kenya and Ethiopia, depend on over 70 percent of their wheat imports from those two countries. Um, you have also the issues of the price of oil which have skyrocketing and which is impacting across all aspects of life and all aspects of commodity that these people need um, for their daily life. Geneva Belem's fried bean cake store in Avijan is a world away from the war raging in Ukraine. But her business is now at the mercy of an unexpected consequences, runaway palm oil prices. At first, I didn't want to sell any more because I thought if the price of oil has gone up that much, what am I going to earn? So I really had a lot of doubt in my head. Geneva's distress over the price of palm oil a tropical commodity not produced in Ukraine or Russia is an illustration of the shock waves tearing through an intricately interconnected global economy. Drought decimated soil oil exports from Argentina and rape seed production in Canada. In Malaysia, immigration restrictions aimed at curbing the spread of COVID-19 caused labor shortages on palm oil plantations. Generally speaking, there is an increase in agricultural raw materials and therefore also in crude palm oil. This started with COVID, the problems of transport and containment. There were price increases on the international market and this was reflected on the local market because of our costs. The selling price of the oil is linked to the selling price of the international market especially the Rotterdam market. So when there is an increase there, there's systematically an increase on the local market. Then, on the 24th of February, Russia sent its military into Ukraine, effectively removing from the market 
a huge share of sunflower supply. The two countries account for over half of global production. Climbing crude oil prices, meanwhile, piled for the pressure on palm oil, a commonly used feedstock for biofuel. Geneva is having to make her own difficult calculations. A 25-litre jug of palm oil that once cost her $32.62 is now at $41.44, with further hikes likely. Her income, she said, has been cut in half. Recently, she's reduced the amount of butter she uses to make her bean cakes. Customers complain that the cake has become smaller than before, but we also try to make them understand that it's not our fault. The market has become expensive. We can't buy the oil. It's really become difficult. Palm oil is an imported export commodity for a handful of African countries, including Cote d'Ivoire. As for Sylvain Uncho, who runs an oil palm mill an hour east of Abidjan, current market conditions are proving to be a financial boon. His company's revenues got a 20% boost over the past year by his own estimate, even though only a fraction of his production is exported. Côte d'Ivoire is a net palm exporter, so Ivorian consumers might expect to be shielded against the whims of the international market. Sylvain, however, says that is not the case. There's a shortage. For example, sunflower oil is no longer available. So it is clear that people will migrate more and more to palm oil. And if demand becomes even higher, it is clear that there will be a further increase in the price of crude palm oil. The other problem is that this conflict may cause problems with the availability of fertilizers and therefore ultimately reduce productivity on the plantation. And if there is a drop in productivity, it is clear that supply will be lower than demand and it is quite possible that there will be tensions. Palm oil, traditionally the cheapest of the edible oils, is ubiquitous in African cooking. Unrefined red oil is an essential ingredient in West African dishes like Côte d'Ivoire's sticky and local plantains. Elsewhere in Africa, refined palm oil is a go-to cooking oil. Africa imported over 7.7 .7 million tons of palm oil in 2019, according to the most recent data from the Food and Agriculture Organization. With tens of millions of Africans having already been pushed into extreme poverty by the pandemic, Many will increasingly face tough choices. Buy food or pay school fees. Take a taxi to work or eat breakfast. Mary Imiza, a chef at food stall in Nairobi, Kenya, said the cost of cooking oil and other food items she buys to make meals has gone up in recent months. We were used to buy rice at 120. Uh, package now we buy it at 140 or 149. Uh, cooking oil we used to buy it at 100 shillings a liter, now it's 300 or 320 per liter, so it's so tricky for us. Even paying bills for us here, it's much not that easy. According to the United Nations Development Program, a trifecta of <laughs> The ongoing effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, the newly felt effects of the Russia-Ukraine war, and the climate-related challenges have severely impacted efforts to sustain peace and reduce poverty and inequality on the African continent. We have never experienced greater pressure and challenge on our ability to sustain peace and development on a healthy planet as we experience today. Uh, a global pandemic that upended the world and changed it forever. We've seen uh, resulting from that, but also in terms of pre-existing conditions, rising poverty and inequality. Some countries in Africa depend on up to 80% of wheat coming from Russia and Ukraine. It is believed that the rise in prices could create another front of discontent and possibly unrest. The war in Ukraine affects the African continent's food, fuel and financing. We saw how 
uh, COVID-19 complicated the effort to uh, maintain or to overcome the insecurity there that's created by many forces, including violent extremism. And uh, the, the, the impact of this, the consequences affecting lives and livelihoods, but also creating uh, immense discontent among the population, which has led to a regression in democracy. The UNDP stressed that, particularly in countries with upcoming elections, where the electoral environment is already quite emotional, could lead to additional social pressure. As inflation rates are soaring, it is also becoming more difficult for households and companies to enhance property and reduce poverty. This is an unprecedented crisis for the continent. Um, it's unprecedented because the continent is facing a trifecta. Um, the ongoing effects of the COVID pandemic, um, the newly felt effects of the Russia-Ukraine war, and thirdly, the uh, climate-related um, challenges and pressures. The um, global um, inflation is being imported into African economies because Africa is so dependent on imports for food, fuel, medicines, and consumer durables. We are going to see um, tensions. Um, whether or not this would spill over into uh, violent protests um, is unclear, but um, what history, uh, particularly recent history, has taught us is that this is a distinct possibility. We were hoping to see a bounce back from um, the poverty um, challenges that um, we had um, experienced um, during um, COVID. Um, an estimated 50 um, million Africans being pushed back into um, extreme poverty. Um, it's going to be much more difficult for them to um, climb out of poverty. The Global Report on Food Crisis jointly released recently by the Global Network Against Food Crisis and the Food Security Information Network, revealed that in 2021, nearly 193 million people were experiencing acute food insecurity in 53 countries or territories. This represents an increase of nearly 40 million people from the previous years, confirming an alarming trend. Acute food insecurity has been on the rise over the last six years. This year-on-year -year increase is largely the result of worsening acute food insecurity and attributable to expanded geographical coverage of analysis. The main number of the, uh, of the global report is under 93 million people facing high level of acute food insecurity. This is a record number, is 40 million higher than last year, and if you look this in, on a long-term trend, is two times the number that we had six years ago. So what, it, what is really worrying is the tendency and the trends that we are, that we are facing in terms of, of, of acute food insecurity. Major food crisis countries remain those suffering from protracted conflicts like Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, Nigeria, South Sudan, Syria and Yemen. Conflict continues to be the main cause of hunger in the world, pushing some 139 million people in 24 countries in acute food insecurity, followed by economic shocks, for example, in Pakistan and Haiti, and climate change. Increasingly frequent and severe weather extremes have been the main driver of acute food insecurity for 23.5 million people in eight African countries in 2021. What is really at the root causes of this, and this is what is very important for the FAO mandate, is that all these derive from a situation of a rural marginalization, rural poverty, which is really, really the main cause of, of, of this crisis. You start from rural poverty, rural marginalization, and then you have all these other factors feeding each other and bring to the number that we, we just mentioned. Forecasts for 2022 show that the impact of protracted conflict and related displacement, often in tandem with microeconomic shocks and extreme weather events, will intensify and prolong acute food insecurity conditions. Somalia is one of the countries that current forecasts place among the 10 major food crises of 2022. A prolonged drought, increasing food prices and persistent violence in the country 
are threatening to put some 6 million people or more than one third of the Somalis in acute food insecurity, while specific hunger hotspots in the country are facing the risk of farming. There is a likelihood that the number will increase again compared to 2021. And we have not yet factored in the Ukraine crisis, which is what we call the elephant in the room. We, we don't know yet what will be the effect of the, of the Ukraine crisis on the, on the overall global food insecurity. So this is something very important. So what is very important for us is to make sure, and I'm talking for, on FAO, to make sure that we keep on monitoring the countries most at risk of, of uh, acute hunger and famine. Because at the moment, because of the attention that is paid to Ukraine, there is a, a risk that we simply forget about other crises. <laughs> Abdiwera Mohammed, a 50-year-old farmer and father of nine, has lost all his animals to starvation once the river near his village dried out. There he there was no farming due to the droughts which devastated our livestock, including goats, camels, cows, and people are facing the worst humanitarian crisis. There is no water flow in the river and people face severe water shortages. Our lives depended on both farming and livestock. The drought has been plaguing Somalia since late 2020. This is the devastating fourth season of failed rains to hit these communities. People's means to produce food and earn income are stretched to the breaking point. The Food and Agriculture Organization has launched a response plan that includes a wide range of support measures for farmers and pastoralists. Animals are kept alive and productive with feed, water and veterinary care. At the same time, farmers are provided with drought-tolerant early maturing varieties of seeds for their fields. In addition to that, Cash transfers are implemented to ensure the most vulnerable can access food. The agriculture sector is a sector which has been undermined in terms of investment in the past. Only 8% of humanitarian assistance goes to the agriculture sector. And it's clear that there you have to really to change this trend. FAO, from, from its side, is investing heavily in agriculture, in agricultural intervention. Uh, investing in, in uh, livelihoods is, some, is a way also to save money and energy because the, the return is 10 times what will, will come from food assistance. But So we need to invest more in agriculture. The Global Report on Food Crisis is the flagship publication of the Global Network Against Food Crisis and is facilitated by the Food Security Information Network. The report is the result of a consensus-based and multi-partner analytical process involving 17 international humanitarian and development partners. That's our show for the week. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check F file online at youtube.com slash channels web for this episode and other episodes of the program. And for your comments and questions, our inbox at filearchannelstv.com is available anytime, any day. From me, Ayola Kasim, and the crew here in Lagos, it's bye for now.